Hello everyone, uh, I hope you're having an excellent Sunday and uh, I really hope this game will further improve it. It's a game from round 5 of the 2018 Batumi Chess Olympiad uh, between Vasily Ivanchuk representing Ukraine and uh, David Anton Guijaro uh, representing Spain. Uh, now we're gonna talk about uh, the results uh, of the matchup uh, and uh, the entire standings after round 5 after we check out this game. Uh, but uh, before that, we do have uh, a couple of nice uh, photos uh, before the game. Uh, as you as you all know, uh, Saturday was a rest day at the Olympiad, so everyone was uh, you know uh, able to do something else uh, non-chess related. So here we have a very nice photo by David Lada. Uh, it's a photo uh, from his visit to the uh, Dolphinarium, if if that is in fact a word. Uh, a very nice photo of two dolphins uh, <laughs> jumping, but it's even uh, as if they were flying. So I, I thought, uh, you know, you, you'd enjoy a nice photo like this. I mean, who doesn't enjoy a nice dolphin photo? Uh, and then also uh, uh, a photo by David Lada, which really impressed me, uh, was this uh, photo of Levon Aronian uh, with, uh, with a t-shirt of, of, of a black cat saying cat. Now, I'm sure there's uh, some reason to this photo, uh, but I found it very interesting because uh, I know, uh, perhaps even you know, Aronian uh, uh, has a dog. Uh, he and his wife have a dog. Uh, but today is uh, their anniversary. The dog's name is Ponchik, and uh, you know he's a, he's a pretty famous dog, uh, and he's also a very good boy. So uh, Aronian having a cat shirt, uh, I, re I really found this interesting. So I thought you'd enjoy it as well. Uh, so uh, we're not gonna uh, have too much photos before this game. Uh, let's uh, let's just check it out as it is a very nice game. Uh, Ivanchuk has the white pieces and he opens with the d4. Uh, I don't know if you remember. I, I think it was in 2016 during the Gibraltar uh, Chess Festival. Uh, uh, David uh, David Anton. Uh, reached uh, the finals. Uh, well, he he won, but he also won with Hikaru Nakamura, and then they had to go uh, into tie breaks where uh, Nakamura was able uh, to defeat him. Uh, but it was a very impressive result. Uh, he goes knight to f6. We have c4, e6, knight to f3, and uh, uh, David uh, proceeds to the queen's gambit declined, of course. Uh, e3 by Ivanchuk. We have b6. Uh, C captures on d5, pawn captures on d5, and now bishop to d3. Uh, bishop to d6, and now comes castles. Uh, we have castles, and now comes b3. Uh, it's a, it's a very, uh, not 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 an everyday try uh, with the black pieces to immediately give this light square bishop some activity. As uh, blacks mostly most of the times in the queen's gambit decline, the blacks' biggest problem will be how to develop this light square bishop. So this uh, early b6 uh, does seem to take care of it, but um, as you'll see in the game, uh, black will some problems uh, in his attempts to execute c5. Uh, so uh, as we said, Ivanchuk pushes uh, b3. Uh, prepares uh, bishop to a3 uh, as e3 was already played he does have to do something about his dark square bishop so his plan is bishop to a3 to exchange it for uh, david's strong dark square bishop uh, rook to e8 uh, we have bishop to a3 as planned bishop to g4 uh, bishop captures on d6 queen captures on d6 and now knight to c3 uh, and here uh, although uh, c5 does seem like the way to go uh, Anton decides uh, he doesn't want to leave his d5 pawn, so rather he plays c6. Uh, he strengthens uh, his d5 pawn, but now uh, for, for a very long time this c6 pawn will be a, a, a weak backwards pawn. and It will not be all that uh, easy to get rid of it. Uh, Ivanchuk plays rook to c1. Uh, he starts his uh, 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 onslaught uh, on the semi-open c file. Knight b to d7, and now bishop to e2. Uh, Ivanchuk plans to exchange the light square bishop as, as well. Uh, rook a to c8, and now queen to c2. Uh, we have knight to e4, and now comes knight to d2. Uh, again, uh, black does want to... Uh, black, black would very much enjoy uh, playing c5, but if you try c5 immediately, uh, you get queen to d3. And again, there's no, no good way to exploit this. For example, c captures on d4, queen captures. And again, you will be left with this um, uh, isolated d5 pawn, which I'm sure is playable uh, if you like isolated pawns. If not, you're not going to go for this. Uh, after queen to c2, we have knight to e4, and now Ivanchuk plays knight to d2. Uh, his idea is to exchange everything. Uh, knight captures, queen captures, bishop captures, we have queen captures, and now comes knight to f6. Uh, perhaps this knight is coming to e4 at some point, uh, but uh, again, it wasn't all that easy to, to execute c5. If c5 here, then simply d captures. 
Uh, B captures on C5 and now Rook F to D1, uh, piling up uh, on the D5 pawn. Uh, and after D4, uh, for example, Queen to D2, and now this, this pawn will be lost. Uh, so after Queen to E2, Knight to F6, uh, bringing a Knight to a nice square. Uh, like we said, Knight to E4 could be an idea at some point, uh, but also strengthening uh, the D5 pawn if, if C5 is ever to be executed. Uh, we have rook to c2 by Ivanchuk. Ivanchuk has plans of uh, e either doubling rooks on the c-file, we'll see. Uh, but perhaps, uh, this, depending on what black plays, perhaps even bringing a rook to a1 and then uh, trying to break through on the queen side. Uh, here, still c5 uh, is not played. Rook to c7. Uh, uh, st still waiting with this uh, execution of c5. Uh, we have rook f to c1 and now rook e to e7. Uh, I, I thought rook rook to c8 was was the idea here, but uh, uh, Anton's idea is rook to e7, and then he will bring the knight to e8 to uh, improve his defense of the rook on c7. Uh, we have queen to f3, now again preventing c5. Uh, if you try c5 now, uh, doesn't doesn't really make any sense. Knight to b5 would fork uh, would fork the queen and the rook. Uh, so we have knight to e8 as planned. Uh, we have knight to e2, and now comes rook to c8. Uh, trying again with this uh, c5 again makes uh, makes no sense as Ivanchuk would simply bring the knight back with a double attack against uh, the d5 pawn and if you try to try to defend it then again you get knight to b5 and uh, uh, the queen and rook get forked. So after knight e2 rook to c8 uh, and now comes queen to f4. Ivanchuk wants to trade queens as he says that uh, uh, <laughs> the only semi-open file on the board is the c file and Ivanchuk uh, is pretty much controlling it. At some point, he will push b4, and uh, black will never be able to, to execute c5. Uh, we have queen to g6. Anton decides uh, he will not trade queens, and now we have h3. Uh, a very nice move. Ivanchuk uh, is preparing uh, a queen trade, uh, and here we have uh, h6. Uh, perhaps Anton should, should not have allowed uh, this queen trade, but... I guess he thought it was manageable. Uh, Ivanchuk plays queen to g4, and now uh, the queen trade uh, uh, cannot be avoided, as, of course, uh, this is the offer, but also the rook on c8 is under attack, so you do have to trade queens. Uh, we have queen captures, uh, pawn captures, and now comes rook e to c7, uh, and now comes knight to f4. Uh, the threat, of course, is uh, if this knight would ever move, then uh, ideas like uh, knight captures on d5 would be possible. Uh, and it's not all that um, all that easy for black to find a plan. Of course, you cannot push c5 anymore uh, because now uh, the d5 pawn is weak, uh, and it doesn't really make sense to push away the knight. If you push away the knight, knight comes to d3 again. C5 square is uh, very well covered, and then the knight can also come to e5. Uh, on the other hand, um, after this knight to f4, if you try something like knight to f6, now to uh, give this uh, pawn further protection, then b4 again you. Uh, black is never pushing c5 in this game. So after knight to f4, uh, uh, we have king to f8, uh, improving the position of the king, uh, and now comes knight to d3. This is a very nice move by Ivanchuk. You have to find uh, a realizable plan here. There is no like uh, like a move, but, but you, rather you have to find a nice plan. And Ivanchuk's plan starts, of course, uh, with a move that is uh, with the knight back. Uh, his idea is uh, he has... He has more control of the uh, of the semi-open C file, and uh, the real weakness in Black's camp is the backward C6 pawn. So his idea is uh, knight to D3, to B4, to A6. For if the knight gets to A6, then he will be able to dislodge uh, one of the defenders of the C6 pawn, and of course, rook captures on C6 is the idea. So knight to D3. Uh, that's only one of the plans if uh, Black uh, doesn't defend well against it. Uh, if he does, then uh, also the knight is very nice uh, on d3. So king to e7. Uh, Anton's idea is that uh, he, he he will not stop Ivanchuk's plan of uh, moving the rook, but he will bring the king uh, here to include another defender of the c6 pawn. Knight to b4 by Ivanchuk, and here we have king to d6. Uh, again, you cannot push c5, uh, you, still you lose this with check and you lose the game. So king to d6, uh, and now Ivanchuk does play knight to a6. Uh, now you have to move the rook, rook to b7 is played, uh, and now comes b4, and now completely removing any hopes of black playing c5. Uh, we have b5. Uh, at some point, black, if if the if this knight ever moves, perhaps rook to a8 followed by a5 will be possible. So here, 
Ivanchu plays knight to c5. He kicks uh, the rook back. Now, uh, b, b, c4 would be an excellent square for, for Anton's knight if he could ever get it there. Uh, for example, if the king moves, he could go uh, king here and then uh, knight here and then uh, bring... Uh, uh, the knight over to c4, but the king has to keep an eye on this uh, pawn. Uh, another idea would be something like knight c7 to a8, uh, then come to b6, and only then come to c4. Uh, but uh, Ivanchuk doesn't allow such ideas. First he plays knight to c5, he attacks the rook, uh, rook has to move, and now comes knight back to d3. Uh, Ivanchuk is uh, hoping uh, to provoke some weaknesses as this knight can come to e5. Uh, so f6 is played here, but uh, perhaps even better than f6 would have been rook to a6. Uh, either forcing uh, white to deal with the, the idea of this rook coming to a3, uh, thus uh, really increasing its activity, or uh, at least this rook uh, will not uh, be able to move so much uh, as it has to keep an eye on this a2 pawn. Uh, but uh, f6 is played rather than this, taking away the e5 square from, from white's knight, uh, and now Ivanchuk plays rook to c3. A very nice move, now rook to a6 will be met with the simple a3, as the rook will be protecting it from, a, from c3. Uh, so king to d7, the knight is now coming to d6. Uh, knight to c5 check, uh, king has to move, and now comes rook to a1. Uh, Ivanchuk is uh, perhaps planning to push a4. Uh, we have rook to a8, and now first comes knight to b3. A4 is a4 is an idea, but uh, first you want to prevent black from pushing a5. Uh, knight to d6, finally this knight is able to come into play, and now comes a4 as planned. Uh, knight to c4, and now comes rook to c2. Uh, we have king to f7, uh, the black king is now coming over to the king side, uh, and now comes rook c to e2. Uh, so uh, from the c file, Ivanchuk allowed black to close the c file, but now uh, the, the a file with, will definitely open at some point. Uh, king to g6, now comes a captures on b5. Rook captures on b5 and the rook captures on a7. Rook captures, rook captures, and rook captures on b4, and the knight to c5. The material on the board is now completely equal, uh, and even Ivanchuk has uh, doubled g pawns. But the problem is, uh, white rook is much more active, and the white knight is much more active. Uh, another thing, uh, black has two pawn islands, one, uh, white has only one pawn island. So that's definitely an advantage for white. Uh, and another thing is, uh, white really doesn't have all that many weak pawns. On the other hand, uh, the c6 pawn is still a very weak pawn, the rook can simply attack it, and on the other hand, uh, the g7 pawn is a very weak pawn, the rook and the knight can combine and attack against it. So it will be very difficult for, uh, uh, although the material on the board is equal at the moment, uh, it will be very difficult for, uh, for David to uh, keep uh, all the pawns intact. Knight to d6 first. And okay, we have rook to, c, uh, rook to c7, attacking the c6 pawn, and now rook to b6. Uh, now black's pieces are very passive here. This rook is stuck def defending the c6 pawn, that's no way uh, for your rook to, to play the endgame. Uh, and the knight isn't really doing all that much. Uh, we have knight to e6, here Ivanchuk is threatening to capture on g7. And now knight to e8, uh, the only way to guard this pawn. Uh, we have rook to e7, attacking the knight, and the rook to b8. Uh, and here f4 by Ivanchuk. So now uh, with this f4 move, uh, Ivanchuk sort of puts uh, David into into a tsukzwang, uh, as the rook can't move. The rook has to keep an eye on the knight. If the knight moves, then you lose the g7 pawn. Uh, the king has nowhere to go really. Okay, you can play king to h7, but f5 takes away even more squares <coughs> uh, from the black king. Uh, so after this f4 move, you kind of have to push a pawn, and you don't really have a good pawn to push. So uh, David tries f5. Uh, here simply g5, h captures on g5, we have pawn captures on g5, and again, uh, you didn't really gain anything, you still have to play something. Uh, again, if you play something like king to h7, uh, white simply improves, king to f2, king to h8, uh, let's say king to f3, and now after g6, okay, your pawns are now very solid, uh, but now white can simply bring his king over, <laughs> over to the center of the board, uh, and uh, black doesn't really have uh, any plans. White can always exchange rooks and then uh, bring his king into the game and start grabbing pawns. So after f captures on g5, knight to d6 was played. Uh, Anton tries giving up one pawn for some activity, uh, and of course Ivanchuk grabs it. Rook captures on g7, we have king to h5, and now comes rook to h7 with check. King to g6, and now comes a uh, king to g4, and now comes g6, as pass pawns must be pushed. Uh, we have f4, and now 
uh, g7. Ivanchuk completely ignores the pawn. There's really no point in capturing it uh, because here knight to f8 wins the game. You simply block off the rook's defense of the g8 square and even if black pushes e2, which does seem very dangerous, uh, g8 uh, queen comes with check. And once you move the king, of course now uh, the black king is in the mating net. For example, queen e6 check, king f4, queen e5 check, king g4, uh, rook g7 check, king to h4, and now queen to h2, this will be checkmate. Uh, so after uh, this g7 move, uh, we have knight to f5, uh, keeping an eye uh, on the pawn, uh, and also keeping an eye on, on the e3 pawn, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, here we have e captures on f4. Uh, now knight to f8 wouldn't uh, wouldn't be all that impressive because knight to e7 would guard the g8 square from queening. Uh, another nice idea after this knight comes to e5, uh, f5. So after knight to f5 we have e captures on f4 by Ivanchuk simply eliminating black's passed pawn. Uh, we have rook to e8 and now comes king to f2. Ivanchuk simply ignores uh, the rook as rook captures knight is not possible. You would simply queen the pawn. Uh, rook to a8. Uh, Anton has to wait. Uh, and here we have uh, a very nice move, rook to h3. Simply bringing the rook back, uh, we have rook to a2 check, king to g1, and now rook goes back to a8. Uh, Ivanchuk hides his king on h2, and now we have rook to e8. And here, uh, it's uh, uh, this is a, <laughs> a very nice position, as there is a, uh, there is really uh, a beautiful... Uh, uh, a beautiful combination here, uh, which uh, both Ivanchuk and David missed. Uh, it, it's a very nice idea, and it features the same theme uh, that was already present in the game. So it's, uh, I mean, it's a winning position for White. So of course you don't uh, need to find any cool combinations when there is a winning position. Uh, but you have all the time in the world, presumably. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here uh, and try to find uh, the idea, uh, a crushing move that both of them missed. Uh, for those of you. Uh, who were able to do it, uh, congratulations, uh, you are truly a, a, a great endgame player uh, and, um, you know, a, a finder of hidden combinations. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, Rook to C3 was played in the game, and it's very possible to play it, Every a lot of moves are winning here. But Rook to G3 check uh, wins the game uh, on spot. <laughs> now, uh, well, uh, let's see what happens if you capture the Rook. If you capture the Rook, uh, then it's pretty self-explanatory. Knight to f8, this is the theme that was already present in the game. You simply take away the g8 square, the defense of the g8 square from the rook, and now pawn to g8 wins the game. Whatever black plays, or you capture the knight and then pawn, pawn captures rook uh, with, with a queen. Whatever black plays, you simply bring a queen and it's all over. Uh, but uh, the very enjoyable, the most enjoyable part is what happens if you don't capture the rook. If you, for example, play king to h4, uh, well then, then you get knight to f8. You take away <laughs> uh, the g8 square from the rook, and now after knight captures on g7, uh, it seems like everything is fine for black, but now you get rook to g5, and this is the monster move. Uh, there is no defense here. Uh, knight to g6 is the threat of checkmate. Uh, if you capture the knight, then you get g3. Again, this is checkmate. Uh, and if you don't capture the knight, <laughs> if you prevent the g3 by pinning the pawn, then you get knight to g6 checkmate. So uh, this rook to g5 move truly, truly a, a masterpiece. Uh, you know, uh, if it was the only winning uh, winning line, I'm sure Ivanchuk would have found it. Uh, but as so many moves win here, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Ivanchuk played rook to c3. Still, black has no moves. Uh, Ivanchuk can play whatever he wants here. Uh, rook to g8. Now comes rook back to a3. Again, you can't capture the pawn here. If you capture, again, you get rook to g3 check. King moves and knight captures. Uh, you lose a piece. Uh, so after rook to e8, we have rook to a6. Uh, there's no point in defending the pawn. You, you will simply capture it. The rook has to keep an eye uh, on the g8 square, so no point in capturing this. Uh, after rook to a6, we have knight to g7. Uh, David tries to, uh, giving up a piece uh, in order to perhaps... Uh, uh, you know, uh, get rid of all the pawns and perhaps draw this game, uh, but it's uh, easier said than done. We have knight captures on g7, rook to e7, and now rook to a3. Uh, of course, <laughs> you cannot trap the knight, because now if you capture, rook to g3 picks up the rook. Uh, so king to f4, and now comes rook to f3 check. A king moves, and now knight to f5, uh, the knight escapes... Uh, 
you know, a any possible uh, en entrapments. Uh, rook to e4, uh, attacking the pawn, now simply knight to e3 check king moves, and after knight to c2, uh, it was on move 67 that uh, David Anton Guijaro resigned the game. Uh, he resigned, there's really nothing to do, any attempts to, uh, to exchange uh, pawns and go for something, for example, c5, pawn captures, uh, rook to c4 with an attack on the knight and the pawn, knight moves, rook captures pawn, but now knight f5 check, king moves, and now rook captures here. Uh, you are up a piece and up a passed pawn, a, a completely winning endgame. So David knows this, and after knight to c2, again, uh, very fitting for Ivanchuk to finish the game with uh, with a move that is uh, a move with the knight back. Uh, a very a very important victory for Ukraine uh, against Spain. As uh, here you have uh, these are uh, all the results uh, f uh, across the boards. Uh, Ivanchuk Vasily versus uh, David Anton Guijaro. There is uh, a victory for Ivanchuk. Uh, Pavel Elyanov lost on board two, so Ivanchuk's victory was all the more important. Uh, Krivoruchko won on board three, and then Ruslan Ponomarev drew on board four, which makes it uh, two and a half uh, to one and a half for Ukraine in Ukraine's favor. And we've already seen this yesterday. Uh, these are the results after round five. Round six is already being played uh, at the moment I'm recording this, so perhaps uh, some of the games have already finished. Uh, but yeah, there we have it. Azerbaijan, Czech Republic, Poland and Ukraine with a perfect score so far. Uh, it's going to be very intense. So there we have it. Uh, I was going to show this game yesterday, uh, but there was a craft beer festival in my hometown, so of course I had to visit that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed this game and that you're enjoying the coverage of the Olympiad so far. I will try to cover as many in interesting games as possible, and don't worry about the Fisher series, we're going to return to that uh, as, as soon as possible, but we do have to cover some of the games from the Olympiad. Uh, I do want to thank Anthony Woodside, uh, David Stein, Agat Mator's dog, Peter Wentworth, and Georgi Kole for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, uh, hopefully, with another interesting video. And as usual, do check uh, all the links to the official Olympiad uh, so uh, social pages. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.